Now, in 1929, uh, he saw a great opportunity for making money by taking over New Jersey breweries owned by an Irish gang that included James Culhane, James Bugs Donovan, Frank Dunn, and Fred Werther. These are Irishmen who owned these New Jersey breweries. Evidently, these Irishmen did not want to get bought out. And within a span of about six months, Donovan and Dunn were shot to death, Werther was wounded, Culhane departed the state, and Waxy Gordon now had his own bootlegging empire in New Jersey. The one, the one that he acquired, the brewery uh, most often mentioned in the legal records, was the Eureka Cereal Beverage Company in Patterson. Now, the headquarters of Waxy's New Jersey beer empire was a six-room suite on the eighth floor of the ritzy Elizabeth Carteret Hotel uh, in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And on April 12, 1933, around four in the afternoon, person or persons unknown un uh, to shot two of his partners, Max Hassel and Max Greenberg, to death. And Waxy, who claimed he was in another room at the time, managed to escape. Now, after the shooting at the hotel, Gordon dropped out of sight. But on a tip, agents from the Special Investigative Unit of the United States Treasury Department and from the New York State Police raided a house on White Lake in the Catskill region of New York. So there's a murder in a hotel. Uh, Waxy Gordon drops out of sight. The police and the, uh, the Treasury Department get a tip of where they can find Waxy Gordon. Neighbors had been suspicious of the people in the house because they only seemed to come out at night. The raid took place a month and nine days after the hotel murders. Investigators found that the house was occupied by Waxy Gordon, along with members of his gang. Waxy insisted there had been a mistake. His name was really William Polinsky, but an alert Treasury agent noticed that the suspect wore silk underwear with the initials IW embroidered on his silk underwear, Irving Wexler. <laughs> 